Hello there, everybody, and welcome. Today, well, I've been asked a lot about this. I'm going to present to you my first Eagle Mount build. We are running the Feudals, and we are running it with Eagles and Dragons. It's a wild, potent, and powerful combination that exceeded my expectations by a lot. So, we are going to get started, as usual, with the racial and cultural traits. As you pretty much already expected, we're running Eagle Mounts. These really don't tell you much about what they do until you play them. The big deal about them is that your units gain flying and they gain a stupidly enhanced vision range. That is the main deal. On the battlefield, they gain all the advantages of flying as well, which is a massive boost in mobility. You have a really, really huge advantage with that, but I'm going to talk about that more later. The other trade I went for was Hardy for a bigger battlefield advantage. Elusive would be also pretty good, or the other one that increases your vision range even further. All good and solid choices. I went for the Hardy trade because this build is meant to be robust as heck. As we gain Draconic Vitality and all these things, I felt like more HP good thing to go. So, the feudal culture. We work with standing together and dealing more damage when standing together. I went for prolific swarmers. Very exchangeable trade here. I like it because it reduces the upkeep of our units and it makes our cities grow faster. Pretty good stuff for the feudal culture, but I do see a lot of other options. Among these, you could go for the enhanced summoning thing, or the runesmiths, or whatever rocks your boat. There's a lot of uh, leeway in this choice. Gifted casters, though, well, I considered it pretty much a must-have, because simply we are very, very inclined in buff magic on the battlefield, and this just gives you one or two turns more before you lose your breath. And it also makes everything cheaper, so you can slam down the summons even wilder. Also here, adjust that to your own liking. I just felt that was a very, very potent combo. All right, moving on over to the Tome Library. So, I started out with Evolution on this one. Simple reasons. The Feudals have Spear Dudes that transform into Tier 2 Shields at the end of their career. Therefore, Evolution procs the feudals innately. We have youthful rejuvenation, making sure that we can use any unit that evolves as a kamikaze bomber. We just need to slap that on them. They gain resurgence, they gain 36 HP, two stacks of strength, and then off you go. It's also a pretty potent battlefield healer, and it's pretty cheap, so nothing to sneeze at. Very, very potent with our uh, build here. Rapid evolution enchantment, yeah. It makes our dudes evolve faster, but most importantly, it gives them a second life when they die. This makes your dudes so annoyingly hard to deal with. Even a tier 1 spear unit can be pretty remarkably robust with the second life. Then comes Draconic Vitality, which gives you more HP per rank ups. So experienced spear dudes are much more tanky. And yeah, it, it is just a very, very powerful beast. We are running for this build the Wyvern Fledglings, not the Slither Hatchlings. I really recommend you not to use them for this build unless you like them that much. I mean, they aren't bad overall, but I didn't find them fitting because this is an airborne build. The Fledglings, they transform at the end of their career into something even way more useful. Fighters with a splice of uh, elemental damage. And they're cheap, they're available, they fill up your ranks really decently, and they fly, just like your guys. The other tier 1 tome here, well, I didn't find any competition for the Tome of Beasts. Wild Speakers provide us with battlefield summons and boost up our animal friends that we're going to need for triggering the animal kinship. But animal kinships go, go so well because we're doing Eagle Cavalry and Wyverns. So there is a synergy between these. The animals and the cavalry boost each other, and you will really notice how hot your tier 2 shields can slap with that combination alone. But Marcus Prey comes in if we have a very, very tanky opponent. Really useful spell, dirty cheap, softens up the enemy's defenses like crazy. Call of the Wild allows you to boost up the battle, uh, the battle stats of your cavalries and animals by a lot, 
and yeah, they are sold, so does someone wild animal thing. I wouldn't recommend it here as much as we are very picky, so you can't skip that with that build here. I recommend picking up Pack Leader as it directly upgrades your cavalry and your animals by a substantial amount. So, moving over to the tier 2. Yeah, Glades. Come on, we cannot skip over Glades. It's just too good. The Glade Runners are a direct upgrade to our tier 1 archers, which are really the worst in our roster until that point. We still don't have unit enchantments that grant us any specific bonuses for the archers, but we don't need to, because we have stand together bonuses, a tier 3 archer has a really decent base damage, and they profit from all the cavalry bonuses that we rack up, so instead of enchanting their weapons, we're, bo we're boosting and buffing them. That's how we make our blade runners hit like a truck. Now, entwined protectors, I would actually skip them in this build because we have the mountain the eagle cavalry they are just tier two our cavalry but um our shields our cultural shields but they are well the point is if your entire band of flies have a really big advantage on map movement that's why i wouldn't pick up these you are well off with what you got because as soon as you have aspect of the root your dudes can even heal themselves on the battlefield your small tier ones and your defenders so you have a really really good thing going on there leaf skin yeah pick it up it's a really nice thing for 250 mana plus one magical resistance for the entire species yes please create forest well you can now pick it up if you want to power play the forest warden traits but i wouldn't recommend it it is if you like to do it, do it, but it's not a, necess a necessity. Tome of Revelry is the other one we're going to pick up, because it's too synergistic with our entire strategy. First off, Blood Fury weapons is that one unit enchant uh, weapon enchantment that fits so darned well into our entire roster. It still doesn't buff up our arches, but our entire melee roster gains moral, damage, and yeah just nice to have. Revels of Carnage allows you to evolve your units faster and that is going to be very important throughout the game, especially in the later stages of the game. The Scald is an amazing supporter providing nice debuffs on his basic attacks, nice buffs in terms of damage, we need that so desperately, and he's also providing some regeneration and a lasting moral buff. Really good stuff. And I'd even go as far that they pretty much replace your bannermen. I still would have one or two bannermen in my composition still. Revel is hard. Yeah, more moral, more crits. Good stuff. And Revels of Blood. Yeah, sure. I mean, I really don't think that the spell is worth the time to research it. But if you have it, it's useful. Yeah, and if you can pick it up into your support roster, Revelous Triumph is absolutely worth the skill point because 20% more damage are just really something you'll feel. Now, tier 3, it's up to you whether you run now directly for Dragons or Vigor. Both are absolutely vi viable choices. Personally, I'd recommend the Dragon's Tome first because you want the young dragons as quick as you can because that allows you to evolve them faster. After all, they turn into tier 5 units, so each one of them is an investment into the future. Therefore, research them as fast as you can and foster them well. Due to the fact that we can't speed up the experience gain so darn good with this build, this is not that much of a big deal. So, other spells in this book. Sadly, Flamer Focus is an absolute miss for this build, unless you gain a external source for battle mages, you won't be using that at all. As good as the skill is, this build just doesn't vibe with it. We gain Purifying Flame, which is amazing. It's a super good healing spell, a little bit costly on the mana side, but that's because it's a 1 Hex Burst Heal plus Status Cleanse. Big stuff. Big, big stuff. Draconian Transformation is really good stuff. We are turning into dragons, that means our units all grow more vicious once they drop 60% or lower. You really notice this. 30% more damage hidden behind a being wounded threshold is amazing, especially since our troops all start regenerating from that point on. This transformation is huge. 
massive. It is a real, real game changer for your entire front line. Yeah. On top of that, we gain the Wyvern Irie, which allows us to recruit the Wyverns. So we are not longer relying on fostering them up via leveling. We can then just pick them out, uh, up in our cities. And most importantly, it is a research post. Your build with the feudals in general, I have the issue that I always struggle a bit with knowledge generation. This boosts up your mid-game knowledge production pretty decently and more draft always comes in nicely. If all fails, you can pick up the fire bombs at least on your heroes, if they have battle magic, that is. The other tier 3 tome I'd strongly recommend, to no big surprise, Tome of Vigor. We gain so many good things there. Empowered Beasts makes your Wyverns grow, grow really into bigger proportions. You can always fill up your army with greater animals if you don't want to go with the entire airborne shtick. It's absolutely viable to go this way too. Super Growth is just, you know, the icing on the cake of your tankiness gameplay. It is just really, really obnoxious at that point how stupidly hard your dudes get to kill uh, with all these things. Yeah, Totem the Wild, yeah, more summons. Who doesn't like that? And Unleash Beast, Berserking Cavalries. Hmm, juicy. Don't miss out on the Animal Handler, giving your entire units a big power-up in terms of magic resistance and making them control immune. Now, Tier 4. So here we have a couple of options. Stormborn Tome, if you have it available, is not so much of a big choice unless you are very close to the oceans. Then it is very, very potent. This book is just amazing in terms of providing bonuses for oceans. Tome of Paradise is... Good, but not as good as it is usually, as we can't use Gaia's Chosen. We have already the Draconic Transformation going on, so we can't have both. Exhilarating Pollen is nevertheless amazing, and the other spells here in the book make you even more hard to kill. But I personally would say you can absolutely go for Nature's Wrath here on that build, or, and that's the interesting part, since we have enough Chaos Affinity racked up, we can also go and backtrack into Chaos, into Devastation. I can overemphasize how stupidly powerful Tome of Defense Devastation is for this build. Your units will gain crits, your enemies will explode, your supporters all of a sudden deal damage and are useful in fortification situations. They can blast enemies out of their defense modes. The Warhounds are useful since we are animal synergistic. The Warbreed is cool since he is also, well, I don't think he comes with an eagle mount, but he's part of our species. So it's a really strong shock unit that you can pick up. Really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. I'll leave it up to you when, uh, where you go in the higher tiers. This build is pretty complete once it has its dragons, and you have a you, you keep a lot of flexibility in terms of backtracking wherever you want. You could also backtrack into a Tome of Faith, which is absolutely powerful. You would gain chaplains and staves of mending, powering up your support gameplay massively. You could also go for another tier one tome like Cryomancy, Pyromancy, or even, I think even Evocation could play in quite nicely due to the supporters we got. There's a lot of uh, leeway after that. Choose to your own liking. Strategy-wise, well, early on, you want to take get out as many peasant pikemen as possible, and a handful of archers are a necessary evil. I'd say in your first three banners of six, you should have three or four archers, but these will get replaced all, at some point eventually with the Glade Runners. This build does require its tier two town hall fast. You want those bannermen. They are really, really useful as they, for one, provide you with an AoE boost of your defenses if necessary, an AoE point blank heal with a moral boost, and they can prime enemies to suffer harder. The Santa defense trade on these guys is a hidden superstar in the roster. We don't have many amplifications on our damage, therefore you can do yourself a big favor and putting the bannermen first by either letting them buff 
so you can do that or you let them attack first and then you get on with the rest of your turn the wild speakers pick them up as fast as you can once you have the beast tome you have with that disposable units available you have the ability to boost up the animal units that you get especially vicious for your wivens and yeah that's pretty much that point you also with this build exclusively want to rush the tier three town hall fast faster than other people it's much it's pretty much worth it to save up the money to do this because your knights are just so gosh darn powerful the thing is these guys are flying and with eagles you have the capability to just fly over everything your own units obstacles whatever you want that means these guys can reach whatever they please and that is just so outright powerful and the other point is they are inspiring killers so that means giving these guys the killing blow is extremely beneficial for your army as your moral will grow and therefore you want these guys these these, these are really really important for your build and therefore it's absolutely worth rushing the tier 3 town hall apart from that well you want many cities since we are feudal we want them as fast as we can and we want to expand as fast as we can as you see here i think i did a pretty decent job for turn 50 and after that it is really really important to note you can clear out whatever you want on the map quite decently easy the spells that you got will help you so tremendously youthful rejuvenation allows you to just you know you take a spear dude you put that on him after he got hit and then you can just let him die used strategically and this little trick is so darn powerful that i really gotta say early on you won't face that many problems you can always use call to glory to boost up your damage profile a little bit and as soon as you have it available call of the wild is massive to boost up your animals and cavalries strongly recommend to fill up your ranks also with wyvern fledglings as these bad boys here will turn into something really useful they're flying as well and they dish out quite a nice amount of damage the big bonus that you got with this build is your units are so fast you can enjoy scouts that uncover the world in a really baffling amount of time and the most interesting part here is you will have eventually entire airborne squads check it out you can put your hero on a mount you will use flying archers flying shields dragons flying knights and wyverns everybody flies on that roster conquering cities is so stupidly easy with that build you can always reposition yourself the way that you want it and the moment you touch this build and put it onto the battlefield you will notice for yourself what an insane advantage that is your people are fast and have the freedom of position themselves where they want to that is the reason why this mount is so gosh darned costy because it has a lot of hidden power the 40 movement points means that everybody in your army will have the mobility of a skirmisher even better than a skirmisher because we are ignoring all of the obstacles town walls don't care any form of walls and rocks don't care you will realize how much of an advantage that is after a while so i must say this build comes off super powerful due to the fact that you are hard to kill i did beat this lovely barbarian lady here with her build in the point where i only had the tier one tomes down on hard difficulty it wasn't even hard i only lost two units in a 18 on 18 battle so three banners versus three banners you can conserve your arm uh, your units so darn good with the fact that everything has resurgence and also never be too sad if you ever lose one of these defenders they are the martyrs of your build it is always okay if they have to die for somebody more valuable to stay alive namely your knights your glade runners your supporters whatever you can get these guys not only trained back up easily 
if you want to go for the peasant pikeman way, you also can just hire them directly. They are not really costly. That's the best part. You can either go for a dirty cheap peasant pikeman and train him all the way up to a defender, or you take you bite the bullet and take the immensely high costs of 100 gold to train yourself a new one. So these guys are your throwaway units in your roster. That is really, really important to stress out. Apart from that, well, you won't win quickly. You will notice that your damage on your units is on average not that high. It is insanely important that at all points you try to utilize stand together for that 20% damage bonus. It is very important that your heroes will be skilled up for support picking up pack leader and feudal ruler all those little 10 percent bonuses that does matter a lot shepherd is also really good for this build and last but not least of course this build can do the little trick of getting somebody with the experienced leader trade into the backwater provinces of yours give them a squad of people that you just want to train and wait how they passively generate XP. Undying Loyalty is a specific trick of the feudals, and you see it is a novice skill I can recommend enough. It is already a pain to kill your people. This makes things even worse. Use it. It's just so annoying. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. This build wins by being stupidly hard to kill and then transitioning into a very very massive late game with tons of tier 5 units so you are strong at the beginning already by just surviving massive slug fests but you will get much much stronger the moment you gain your tier 3 tome and access to the dragons this build is very weighted, weighted into mid and late game with the units that it has but the evolution combo into into beasts with those eagle guys wow i i was very surprised how good the early wars went yeah that's all i have to say try it out eagle mounts rock they, they are really much better than i thought the only thing i am not agreeing with is the fact that they don't give any extra hp that is a little bit i think if i have to pay four freaking points of my five I would have had at least the plus 5 HP that all the cavalry, uh, the mythic cavalry dudes get. But that's just my personal opinion. So, thanks for watching. Drop me your comments down below. Thumbs up would be wildly appreciated. And consider subscribing. There's also the description box below waiting with many links leading to Discord, Twitch, and my Patreon, PayPal, and Buy Me a Coffee accounts. You can also become a member of the channel and gain access to all the scheduled videos earlier so that all being said thanks a lot for supporting the channel and thanks a lot for watching this video until the very end it means a terrible lot to me and i appreciate you being around and i hope you're coming back for another one see you there bye bye